Hey, this is Joel McDonald with Newbie PPC, and this is another video on setting up your account with the best practices in mind. Now, hopefully you've already watched the intro video that showed you how to set up your account with all the best practices in mind, but there was one thing that was missing, and that was setting up your keywords. The reason we skipped that was because you first have to decide whether you're advertising on the display network or on the search network. And in this case, we're going to talk about setting up your keywords for the display network. Now, as a reminder, the display network is what we call interruption marketing. And, uh, you know, that's the equivalent of advertising a billboard on the side of a road or uh, possibly TV commercials. It's not like advertising in the phone book. Notice the difference is if someone goes to the phone book, they very much have in mind what they're looking for. If you're advertising on the display network, it's more like interruption marketing where they're probably reading a blog that has something to do with your products or something like that, but they're not necessarily in a buying mode. So in that case, you know, you, sh you want to have a website that doesn't really involve much of a commitment for them to get more information. So hopefully you're, you're collecting leads, you're gathering opt-ins of some sort. Even if you're a website that, you know, your, your primary objective is to get them to pick up the phone and call you, that's perfectly fine because, you know, there's no obligation for them to pick up the phone and get a free consultation or whatever the case may be. So uh, if your business fits into that category, then you probably want to start off with the display network because you can get cheaper traffic and it will probably convert pretty well, probably better uh, at a higher percentage than the uh, search network would convert for you. So with that said, there are a couple things you want to avoid when you're working with the display network. You definitely want to make sure that you're not bidding too high. Uh, and we'll cover a little bit more about how to pick what bids you should go with uh, in uh, later in this video but you you basically want to make sure that you're not bidding too high well I'll, I'll also talk about making sure to clump your keywords um, in a nicely tightly organized ad group um, not doing that is gonna just it's gonna give you kind of a shotgun approach to advertising in the content network and you don't want to do that and then I'll also show you how to avoid money-sucking AdSense sites. The biggest problem with the content network is you can often end up uh, advertising on websites that will not uh, convert for you. They'll get plenty of clicks for you, they'll get plenty of visitors, which you'll pay for, but those visitors might not convert. And you want to make sure to avoid those websites. So that's what I'm going to show you in this video. So now let's go ahead and log into my sample account and uh, finish setting up your campaign. Okay, so here we are in a sample campaign. Uh, I set this up earlier and I did everything except adding the keywords. So if you remember, I, uh, I set up a new campaign. We called it uh, Women's Weight Loss or Weight Loss for Women. And that's because, you know, we're assuming I already did some keyword research and I don't want to just go after the whole weight loss niche I'm going after specifically going after weight loss tips for women so I set up an ad group under weight loss for women and I also followed a best practice of writing two different ads so you know I've got ad one ad two these are disapproved because this is just a fake site don't worry about that but uh, you know that's also a best practice that you want to make sure you do so hopefully you've already done that next we want to talk about setting up your keywords now in the content network you're gonna go ahead and set up your keywords in a way that is done by default with Google and that's uh, setting them up in broad match bottom line is it doesn't matter how you set up your keywords Google treats all content network or excuse me all display network keywords as uh, broad match. So the good news is you can just go on over to this add keywords tab and uh, choose the campaign you're going to do, choose the ad groups you're going to do, and you can just start typing in your keywords. Now keep in mind that's one way to go about it. Another great way is to get Google's help. So uh, what I want you to do is go on over to this opportunities tab and we're gonna go over to this handy little keyword tool. Now if you're logged in, it's it's really convenient because you can just type in some key some you know seed 
keywords or, or base level keywords and Google will help you out by suggesting some other ones. So remember I'm very big on on clumping your keywords and sticking within a very tight niche. So I'm gonna just type in weight loss for women. Weight loss women. Women's weight loss. So I've got a few variations. Notice that I'm just keeping it very vague, you know, just just three keywords, but I've, I'm doing very different orders because uh, we're only going to do, we're going to check this box that has them only suggest closely related terms to your keywords. Uh, then we're going to, let's just, let's throw in a misspelling too. Um, weight loss woman, just in case. Um, so not a misspelling, but a singular version. So now we're going to hit search, and Google is going to give us a bunch of suggestions. And let's just say that I like all of these. I'm just going to check this box and just kind of look through this, see if there's anything else that I don't want. But these all look great. These look like great targeted keywords for the uh, ad that I'm running. And I'm going to go ahead and add them all. Google has suggested about 80 keywords all revolving around that phrase. So I'm going to say, sure, I'll take them. And we're going to hit this little Add Keywords button. We're going to tell them it's going to go in that campaign. It's going to go in that ad group. We're going to hit Save and Continue. And there we have it. If we go back to our campaign, I'm going to just click on this Keywords tab. And look at that, all of my keywords have been added. Now before we finish with this lesson, I want to talk about how you arrive at your uh, cost per click. Okay, so there are a couple ways, actually a few ways, you can determine what you're going to spend per click. The very easiest and most basic is just to jump in, pick a number you're comfortable with and just bid. And when in doubt, bid less. Uh, you can always raise it if you're not getting enough impressions, but uh, it can't hurt to just jump in and bid, assuming you're bidding a conservative amount. Um, now, you know, if you're selling a fr free ebook, uh, or, you know, a free report uh, that's going to upsell an ebook for $100, you probably want to be in the 10 to 30 cent range, maybe 50 cents, but that's probably a little high. Um, if you're selling jumbo jets, then that's not even going to come close, and you you know, you probably want to be bidding 10 bucks per click. But uh, let's talk about some more scientific ways about of determining how to determine what you're going to bid in the display network. Okay, so uh, a little bit better, more scientific way is just pretty easy. If you're already bidding in the search network, then typically what I see is content network bids should be 30 to 50 percent of what your search network bids are. So if you do happen to already be advertising in the search network, then you could just kind of jump in, uh, quickly clone the campaign that you're running in the search network, drop that into a display network campaign, and uh, bid 30 to 50 percent of what you're spending in the search network. And that should be a good start. Now, uh, Assuming you don't have any experience, any background with AdWords, and you have no clue what you should be bidding, let's kind of walk through a formula for that. Okay, so let's say that your ultimate goal is to sell a $100 ebook. It'd probably be $97, but whatever the case, let's just call it a $100 ebook that you're trying to sell. Let's say that you're collecting leads or opt ins, and for every 20 people that you get to opt in to your free report, 5% uh, of them eventually buy. Whether that's within a week or within 30 or 90 days, you can assume that 5% of the people that you get to opt into your free report or into your list end up buying. Well, so that's that's something to start with. Let's also assume that your uh, you know, of all the people that visit your website, 20% of them opt in to your free report. So that's what we've got to start with in our little example. Okay, so let's break that down a little more. So 
using the same example of your hundred dollar ebook if five percent of the people who opt into your free report buy that means that your break even point is five dollars per lead now if it takes a hundred visitors to get twenty opt-ins or twenty leads well that means that your break even point uh, on a per click basis is one dollar now remember that's your break even point we have to assume that you want to make some sort of a profit on this so that's where you just simply divide that number by what your required profit margin is so some people want to make they want as much volume as they can get and they want to make twenty percent uh, or 25 percent or whatever you know and if, if that's the case then they should be bidding a, a max of 80 cents. In this example, I've said, well, I want to double my money. So every dollar I spend, I want to get two back. Okay, well, in that case, I'm willing to spend a max of 50 cents. If you're really, really greedy and you want to make four dollars for every dollar you spend, well, then you would just bid 25 cents. Now, remember, the lower you bid, the less traffic you will likely get, um, but the more conservative it is. You can always raise your bids in the future. You can always lower them in the future depending on how your metrics turn out. The whole idea here is to just pick a jumping off point and just pick a number and just jump in. Remember you've got plenty of benchmarks in place that are, that are going to make sure you don't go wild spending money. You can set your daily budgets so that you don't spend more than a dollar or two dollars or ten dollars a day. And as an example let's just go back to my sample campaign if you look at my daily budget I actually have a dollar a day and the reason I set that was because on the off chance that any of my ads got approved and got clicked I didn't want them going crazy on me for a website that isn't even mine so I actually set it at a dollar a day and Google will let you run a campaign for just a dollar a day so the whole point of this exercise is to just get you comfortable with the idea of setting up a campaign that isn't going to run away on you. You can spend as little as you want per day and you can spend as little as you want per click. You can always raise the clicks in the future. The whole point here is to jump in, get started, and start getting some traffic to your website so you can determine how profitable that traffic is. Once you get to the point that you're putting a dollar in and getting two dollars back or putting a dollar in and getting four dollars back, well then you ramp things up as high as you possibly can. And I've got clients that are spending a hundred, two hundred, four hundred thousand dollars a month, but that's because we know our metrics and we're comfortable spending that because we know that every dollar we put in, we can get more than that back. And uh, you can only get to that point by starting small and growing smartly. So hopefully this video has helped you do that. Everything I've shown you should be enough to get you started with a campaign and you can grow it as slowly and as conservatively as you like and then build it into a business that means that for every dollar you put in you get two back and trust me once you get to that point you'll spend as much money as you can to get as much traffic as you possibly can to make as much profit as you possibly can I do hope these videos have been helpful and they've helped you feel comfortable getting started with an AdWords account. I really, really do believe that AdWords is just a wonderful business building machine and uh, hopefully you can use it to your company's advantage starting right away. If you'd like a free checklist, it's, this is actually the same checklist I use for my own clients, for my own companies, to make sure that I've dotted every I and crossed every T and done everything absolutely perfectly to make sure that my advertising dollars are stretching as far as possible, feel free to opt in on the form to the right and I'll send that checklist right off to you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.